one of the most brutal concentration camps of the Third Reich, was Mauthausen Guzen. Inside of these camps, prisoners were forced to conduct backbreaking slave labour under horrific conditions, which led to many thousands of deaths. Mauthausen and its subcamps contained quarries, munition factories, mines, and other plants, which were used in the German war effort, assembling military equipment and even aircraft. The conditions at Mauthausen were more severe than at many other camps, and it's estimated that half of the 190,000 people who were sent there were killed. One of its largest subcamps was Guzen, and it was found in Upper Austria. It was mostly populated to begin with by Polish prisoners, but inside of Guzen, at least 35,000 people died. Then the camp was liberated by the American 11th Armoured Division on the 5th of May 1945, and there was chaos with many people there dying and suffering. Many former guards and capos were killed in retribution. Guzen was truly hell on earth, and inside of the camp, one man who was executed there was known as the Saint of Guzen for his actions, but he was killed in a very terrible way. Join us today as we look at the brutal execution of the Saint of Guzen, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. As mentioned, conditions at Guzen were worse than they even were at Mauthausen, the main camp. In 1940, the average life expectancy of a prisoner was just six months, and they weighed an average of 40 kilograms. Typhus epidemics broke out, which killed many prisoners, and the intention of the camp was for the inmates to work until they were exterminated through labour. They were either killed by being worked too hard, or those who were not work enough were executed. Prisoners were transported there throughout the Second World War, and around 7,000 people were kept at all times, until overcrowding occurred despite the high death rates. Prisoners were counted twice a day at roll call, and during this, often execution of prisoners occurred. The inmates faced starvation and beatings by the guards and carpos, and were deprived of basic facilities such as functioning toilets and sinks. Guarding them at all times were watchtowers equipped with machine guns, ready to be turned on if a prisoner tried to make an escape. Some of the carpos inside of Guzen were infamous for their brutality. For example, one named Wolf executed prisoners by hanging them, and then also stamped on their bodies. Another took part in gassing inmates. Many prisoners who could not conduct hard labour anymore were sent to Guzen to be killed. The SS forced prisoners to run to test their fitness, and those who could not were killed immediately. Many were also beaten to death. There was even a new execution method developed there, called the Death Bath. Here prisoners were forced to stand under a freezing cold shower until they died, which could take up to two hours. Inside of these, the drains also got blocked, where many drowned from the water. But inside of Guzen, a man was killed in barbaric ways by the cruelty of the SS guards who worked there. Dr. Johann Gruber was a teacher and a Catholic priest who became known as a saint of Guzen for his actions and his time there. In 1910, he became a priest and served near to Linz, Hitler's hometown. He fell foul of the Nazi authorities like many Austrian priests did, following the Anschluss and annexation of the country into Hitler's empire. In 1938, Gruber was sacked from his job and was then imprisoned by the Nazis, who accused him of assaulting a number of his pupils. The reality of the situation was that he had actually been arrested for his opposition and disgust at the occupying Nazi forces and the National Socialist regime which was being imposed on Austria. While he was arrested and held in prison, the Nazis then began a smear campaign against him, and this is where the rumours about him came. He was sacked as a priest and a lecturer, and was then sent to prison at Linz and Garston from 1938 to 1939 to await his trial. Witnesses came forward to confirm the allegations, and these had been put under pressure by the Nazis to falsely testify against him. Following these, he was then sent to Dachau concentration camp, and he was then transferred to Gusen in 1940. The Vatican did try to intervene and get the treatment of Catholic priests inside of concentration camps much more lenient, and a number of priests were transferred from Gusen to Dachau, where things were slightly better. But Johann Gruber volunteered to stay at Gusen to help his fellow Polish prisoners. As he was considered a very prominent priest in Austria, he was given some privileges inside of Gusen by the SS. He used this to try and help a number of the poorest inmates there, and he became a valuable member of the camp's daily life. He was an organiser, and he even helped to set up a school inside of Guzen to educate Polish children who had been sent there. 
1941, he also became involved in the Archaeological Command after archaeological discoveries were made as a railway was being made near to Guzin. This allowed him to become familiar with many people outside of Guzin, for example local museums and other archaeologists, and through this he managed to get his friends on the outside to smuggle money into the camp for him. With this, it allowed him to bribe SS guards and carpos to organise food to be distributed with a number of inmates who were starving, and because of Johann Gruber's actions, he saved many lives of people who would otherwise have starved to death. As well as smuggling money, along with a number of comrades, he also managed to smuggle information out of Guzan about the camp and how it was being run. He informed local people on the conditions and the executions that were being carried out. However, Johann Gruber's network were eventually betrayed and discovered, and he was discovered by the camp commander of bribing guards and also providing food for starving inmates. Because of this, he was imprisoned in the camp's prison, and he was tortured brutally for three days. Despite his valiance and brave efforts, he was breaking some very serious rules and the camp commandant had no remorse for him. He was brutally beaten and was tortured to within an inch of his life. Inside of his prison cell, he was tortured constantly and was eventually killed by the SS and the Gestapo officers who brutalised him because of his actions. It's believed he gave over no further information about the people he worked with but died because of the torture. But what happened next was truly horrifying. Johann Gruber's dead body was taken from the prison out into a nearby yard where a tree was found. Here the guards then hanged his corpse from a tree to act as a terrifying reminder to the prisoners of Guzan not to break the rules and to abide by them at all times at the camp. His body was left out for some time before it was then taken down. The Nazis declared that he had died from taking his own life but this was not the case and after the Second World War the true story of Johann Gruber's brutal death did emerge. It took around 60 years for the conviction against Gruber to be overturned by the courts. Today he is known as the Saint of Guzan, whose actions managed to save the lives of many of the starving and dying concentration camp victims. In the brutal and terrifying conditions of Guzan, he was a shining light, who gave people hope and he turned his attention to helping educate children despite their incarceration. He was one of at least 35,000 people who died at Guzan through starvation, forced labour and mass execution. It was a truly terrifying place to be imprisoned, and today Johann Gruber is remembered as the Saint of Guzan. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.